So let's talk about AVL, atypical vascular lesion. So I don't really love this name because this lesion is not really that atypical, and also the name sounds like it's a descriptive, um, descriptive diagnosis rather than an actual specific entity name. So I think that confuses a lot of people. Um, and what this is is a benign vascular proliferation that arises in the setting of radiation. Um, and it often looks histologically a lot like a lymphangioma or a lymphatic malformation. It has infiltrative growth but lacks atypia usually. And clinically, this is the most important thing about AVL, clinically these usually look like small flesh-colored papules arising within the radiation site as opposed to angiosarc, which, is, which I've already shown you, purpura and, and large nodules or plaques. So the, the uh, clinical here is hugely important in helping distinguish between AVL and a subtle angiosarcoma. Here's an example histologically. You can see that you have a dermal proliferation of infiltrative vascular channels, and it's going down quite deep in the dermis, actually. And at higher power, look, this is infiltrative channels that are in dissecting between the collagen bundles. You can sometimes have a little bit of hyperchromasia in the uh, endothelium, but they, they do not usually multilayer. They do not usually have mitoses. They do not usually have pleomorphism. So those really atypical features of angiosarc are usually lacking in AVL. But you can have some hyperchromasia, and you definitely can have infiltrative growth. Uh, so if, it, if I'm in doubt, I call the clinician to discuss, ask what the history is clinically. I think that if you can conservatively excise these, it's probably a good idea just to be sure that you're getting the whole lesion and not missing an underlying angiosarc. But most people think that the majority of AVLs are actually benign and do not progress to angiosarc. So um, uh, that's, uh, we just talked about all of this, but here it is for your reference. Um, and if you're really debating over angiosarc, this is the great time to use the CMIC amplification test. So you do fish, an AVL will be negative for CMIC amplification by fish, whereas a post-radiation angiosarc is usually positive. All right, so um, this is kind of controversial and evolving, but again, the most people think these are probably benign. There are rare examples of that are, are basically proven AVL that turns into angiosarcoma, but most of the time we think that these are probably not precursor lesions. They probably just arise in the setting of radiation just like angiosarcoma does, but most of them do not progress to angiosarc. But the biggest thing to me is I usually will ask the clinician to remove the lesion so that I can make sure that I don't have an unsampled un underlying bigger angiosarcoma. I just want to make sure I'm seeing the whole thing. And I do recommend close follow-up for patients with AVL. I think it's a good idea to make sure that they get screened often just to make sure there's no new vascular lesions developing. And um, sometimes patients have multiple, you know, 30, 40, 50 AVLs. Um, I've not seen that personally, but it's been described. And in those cases, you obviously cannot completely excise all of those. It wouldn't be feasible. So I think just close follow-up for those patients is important.